high. The big result of Pythagoras that he is credited for is the Pythagorean theorem. Now, a lot of people are going to say that the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And it's very likely that I'm going to ask you something about the Pythagorean theorem on the next exam and very likely the final exam. And if you write this, you are going to get very little credit because if a and b and c were all 5, for instance, 5 squared plus 5 squared is not equal to 5 squared. 50 is not equal to 25. So it's more than that. It's a squared plus b squared equals c squared only for particular values of a, b, and c. Only for what values of a, b, and c? They have to be the lengths of the sides of a right triangle. So if I say state the Pythagorean theorem and you say a squared plus b squared equals c squared and you draw a triangle and you write a and b and c on it, I'm almost going to give you full credit. You have to use the word right triangle or you have to draw that little square in the bottom which indicates that it's a right angle. And the question is why? Why is this? Well, what does it mean to be squared? Well, what is a squared? A squared is the area of an A by A squared. In fact, if that length is A, then an A by A squared is a square that fits neatly on that side. This is an A by A by A by A square. And B squared is this square on B, and C squared is the square on C. And the question is, why does this area plus this area really equal this area? Let's switch over to a different program. Here we are. Here we have a right, tri a right triangle with the smallest length is A, the medium length is B, and the hypotenuse is C. I'll put those away for a second. Look at this. I just so happen to have already constructed a square whose length is a by a. So that is the area of a squared and this is the area of b squared and right over here we have a square of area c squared. So what the Pythagorean theorem is saying is that the combined area of these two yellow squares adds up to the area of the red square. Now hopefully if you really understand the Pythagorean theorem you'll be inclined to say why? Why does this happen? Clearly, the yellow square is a little bit smaller than the red square is the biggest one. It's this, you know, it has to be the square on the biggest side. But why does this area plus this area, the amount of paint it would take to cover this, the, the two yellow, the amount of yellow paint you would need is exactly the amount of red paint you would need. Well, my favorite proof actually is credited to the Chinese about 1000 BC, so way before Pythagoras. Why don't we call it the Chinese theorem? Because the Chinese didn't tell the Europeans about it. Anyway, if you take four copies of this triangle, you can stick them around this red, this red square and make a bigger square out of it. Come on, triangles. Yay, there you are. You can make this, do I even need these things anymore? You can make one nice big square. What is the dimensions of the square? Well, the smallest length is A, and the second length is B. So it's an A plus B by A plus B big square. And you could also make a square of the exact same dimensions with four, also with four of the triangles. Um, four of these triangles, just rearrange in a slightly different fashion. Here we have this big square and this big square are exactly the same area. If you look, they have the same height, and if I move one of them over, it's got the same width as well. So these two squares have the same area. And if I subtract one triangle from each, what is left will still have the same area because these gray triangles all have the same area. If I subtract this and subtract this, they now have the same area. If I subtract this 
and subtract this. They have the same area. And if I subtract this and subtract this, these two things have the same area. And that is what we were saying. This little a squared plus the b squared together equals a c squared. And isn't that cool?